Hello and good morning. It's uh, Darren Corbier from Eastern Woodland Art. I'm just going to be giving you a quick uh, review, maybe, maybe five or six minutes. Uh, this is probably about the tenth time I've done this so far. <laughs> so maybe about five or five or six minutes. A quick evolution of the uh, the this new educational resource called the Truth and Truth and Reconciliation Game. Now the the reason why I'm bringing it to you is because it was the OSSTF who sort of uh, provided the impetus for this game, and I just wanna I just wanna take you through the history here. So uh, 2015, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report comes out and there were uh, certain recommendations around uh, what education can do. So the, year, the next year, in 2016, the OSSTF put out a call for uh, Indigenous teachers to come in and contribute to the creation of a toolkit to help teach the, about the truth and truth and reconciliation. So uh, the idea was to disseminate the, a toolkit to the membership and, and they would have something that they could, they could talk about. So one of the things that I was tasked with was coming up with uh, an activity that would engage the, the, the teachers in the learning. And uh, I, I, over the May long weekend in 2017, I created this little board game. I went down to the dollar store, picked up a bunch of dollar store items and, and put together this, uh, this game. At the time, it was just called the Colonization Game very early in May uh, 2017. And in the game, it had uh, these little trivia cards. So bingo, treaty, congrats, and sorry. Eh? But they were all color-coded initially. They didn't have titles, but they were all color-coded. So if you landed on a yellow on a yellow space, you would draw a yellow card. The uh, The background is Turtle Island, and the the, the, the board is divided into seven uh, se uh, four sections with seven spaces in each. So, you know, sacred numbers, indigen like, like indigenous things. Uh, there were uh, seven players initially, so we had the, the church and the crown, and way back over there you have the kayak representing the Inuit, then there's the Mohawk, the Métis, the Cree, and then the Anishinaabe there in the middle. And uh, the indigenous players had land, language, culture, and identity. That was the currency in the game. There was no money, there was currency. Uh, the church and the crown were eligible for shame cards, and um, indigenous players would re receive status cards as part of the and, and as part of the consequences so these cards had basic information a fact a, a, a um, historically accurate fact and then a consequence on how it have impacted on indigenous people so um the uh, union decided to to go on with a, a another project and uh this sat for like probably about six months and then i went to um I went to an FNMIEAO conference in October 2017, and I had this game out, just, just like this, and uh, Nelson Education came by. Uh, Linda Isaac, the indigenous representative from Nelson, came by, and uh, I was trying to pitch this series of comic books that I, that I had written. Uh, they didn't care much for the comic books, but when they saw this, they, their eyes lit up and they wanted to work, uh, work on this a bit more. So... What I did was I, I, I took some of my artwork, uh, actually, uh, just, just to go back, along with this, uh, this game, there was, uh, um, what the heck do they call these, a PowerPoint presentation, uh, about 52 pages or 52 slides, uh, PowerPoint presentation that, that included some of the facts here. And this is like the precursor or the, or the uh, um, yeah, the precursor for the Genuine Indian Guidebook. So... What I did was I, I, I hired, um, I sold some artwork. I was lucky to sell some artwork and I hired a graphic designer, the same graphic designer who uh, uh, worked on my comic books. And she took elements of my artwork and this is what we ended up with. Now, when I presented, when I presented this game, this version to Nelson, again, the, 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 coming from, from here, to here, they, they just absolutely lost their minds and, and really wanted to began to pursue it uh, actively to try and get this this game to market. And I just want to before before we go on with that, I just want to show you some of the inspiration for some of the artwork. So, for example, in the in the in the, the creation story, this is my comic book. Um, here is the first human being uh, lowered from the divine light, and she becomes the inspiration for the the language card. And um, at the back of this comic book, bear with me here. At the back, 
All right, let's go. Let's do this. Come on now. We can do this. We can do this. There we go. So at the back of the comic book uh, is the identity. And then over here, uh, this piece of artwork called the Earth on Turtle's Back becomes the inspiration for the land card. So uh, all of these, uh, everything is authentic. Uh, no, no Buffy St. Marie's or Joseph Boyden's uh, here. Everything's authentic. Uh, all the work is uh, authentic, original, and indigenous. And this is the original uh, cover art for, um, for the box. So there's the box. And then here's the original artwork that inspired the box. This guy, this artwork is called Bakka De, which uh, when translated from Anishinaabem when means uh, to, to be hungry or to hunger. And so in this context, you're hungering for the truth in truth and reconciliation. So the 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 premises the premise are, is the same. We have the um, the uh, currency cards uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Nelson. We added a set of status cards. Uh, the 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 original game was only fifty two cards, like an old deck of cards, and uh, the the that increased to a hundred cards. So five uh, suits of twenty cards each, and then we increased the number of players. Uh, representing geographically all across Canada. So there were 10 Indigenous players uh, representing various provinces or regions, plus the church and the crown. So you had 12 players. We have 12 players in the game. One of the other things that um, Nelson liked or, or wanted to have is a way of keeping track of how many times you went around the, the, the board. Because every time you went around the board, it was like Monopoly. The Indigenous player would, would uh, uh, collect something. And so... I, again, uh, taking my artwork, uh, created these four eagle feather cards. Um, and every time an indigenous player passed the eastern door, they would earn an eagle feather card. So the idea behind the game is that the indigenous players start the game with all the currency, land, language, culture, and identity. And as they go around the board and land on these spaces, they uh, draw the corresponding card. And the card would have a fact, a um, historical fact and the impact on indigenous culture, uh, land, language, and identity. And it's usually resulting in the loss of that. Sometimes, though, um, the church and the crown would earn shame or status cards. So uh, uh, the indigenous player had to collect four eagle feathers before running out of currency, and they were declared survivors, and they, and they kind of, you know, air quote, won the game. Um, if they lost all their currency before collecting or, or four eagle feathers, they went extinct and then they were out of the game. So, um, Nelson vetted the game somewhere in Ontario, apparently, and, uh, uh, the, the Catholic, uh, entities, uh, I'm assuming the Catholic school boards, uh, turned it down because, uh, they wanted me to remove the shame cards, uh, cause they, they didn't want their students questioning why the church would earn shame cards. Anyway, uh, so I came back and I said, well, here, I'll keep the shame cards, but what about humility cards? And they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't take the compromise. So um, uh, Nelson ended up abandoning the game. And uh, that was back in June 2018. So uh, it was uh, seven, six or seven years later, um, I, I moved to British Columbia and uh, uh, eventually found my way down here to Vancouver Island. And I found a publisher, uh, Medicine Wheel Publishing. May, uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, Medicine Wheel Publishing. They are a non-Indigenous publisher, but they are, their, their mandate is to produce Indigenous-made uh, resources, educational resources for schools. So this is the... Uh, I guess the production model, um, we've worked together now for the last, uh, since, uh, June, uh, 2023. Uh, and, and this is the, the, the final or the, the print version of the game, uh, that is going to soon be available. It's called the truth and truth and reconciliation. Again, the emphasis on authentic, original and indigenous. And when you get the game, uh, you will now take the, uh, so you remember this guy, this is the, the genuine, the abbreviated genuine Indian guidebook. And now it becomes the genuine guidebook. I, I yeah, uh, they took the Indian out of it, but uh, the, I, I suppose that's okay. Um, and then here uh, uh, I've created this, uh, this little comic book 
called the uh, Firekeeper Tale. So I'll just show you some of the original artwork here. So this is the some of the original artwork and the the initial or inaugural version of the Tales of the Firekeeper. And when you take that out you'll have all of your cards so there's a status shame and the player cards and then you have your currency and eagle feather cards uh, and out of the box uh, are the re uh, renamed truth and consequence cards so we've got the shkena the indian act cards treaty cards status cards and shtataha cards and this is what the final board looks like all right so um sorry i said five or six minutes uh i'm i'm way off obviously so this is the uh this is the final product and this is what you will get when you order or and receive your copy of the truth and truth and reconciliation board game and i just put it all together like this so you can see the various iterations so this is the final product this is the one of the working uh, copies that I used for years, and this is the original, the original game, and the original artwork uh, from way back in May, 2017. And again, this was uh, this was something that uh, Gary Fenn uh, had uh, had a hand in uh, creating. Um, the 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 OS, OSSTF provided the. Uh, you know the 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 power or whatever the inspiration <laughs> for this game to be created or, or the opportunity created space whatever you want to call it um and i think it would be really really awesome uh, to be at your meeting at uh, the agm in march to sort of kick this off in uh, ontario um this uh is going to print uh, shortly thereafter I, I think your your meeting is around the 9th or to the 11th or something like that um uh the this goes to production uh, at the end of march on on the 30th of march and uh, uh copies will be available starting august 13th and uh like i said it would be great to be able to bring all of this to your meeting or at least set up somewhere where I can uh, talk to the, you know, the members of the OSSTF and uh, help promote the game. So this is, this is um, education fulfilling some of the uh, expectations from the Truth and Truth and Reconciliation Commission report. And, uh, I, you know, you, you helped me get it started <laughs> then. And I would appreciate if you could uh, help me uh, continue the, the journey here and, and we can work on this process of reconciliation together. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, connect with me. Uh, I will provide the contact coordinates for you. And... Um, once again, I am grateful and I am happy that this is finally working out. It's a seven year journey. Nahal. Miigwech, miigwech, miigwech.